So we've looked at a bunch of fairly simple loading mechanisms, whether it's axial load, uh, torsion, so shear stresses resulting from torsion, or normal or shear stresses resulting from bending, and we've looked at them all in isolation. And what we need to do now is start to bring them together because it's quite reasonable that within a structure, multiple loading conditions could occur. And so these normal stresses and these shear stresses are going to occur simultaneously, and we need it to have a method to, to deal with them. So, of course, the normal stress uh, is acting perpendicular to the cross-section, and a shear stress is occurring parallel to the cross-section. And so, depending on whether it's a normal stress or a shear stress, is going to matter to us. So, what we want to do is we want to put them all together, so apply our individual um, uh, loading mechanisms independently, and then combine the stresses uh, that they're causing into a single uh, condition, if you will, stress condition at a particular point. Now, fortunately, we've got a lot of tools that we've already talked about that are going to allow us to do this. So the first one is superposition. So you remember, I hope, from our earlier discussion, what superposition is all about. And really what it empowers us is it tells us that the individual stresses combine to define the state of stress holistically. So we can run all of our individual mechanisms as long as we're staying within the constraints and the assumptions of, of superposition. We can combine them to come up with the combined stress condition resulting from multiple different types of loading. So this was the slide that we used early on in the axial um, stress uh, examination to talk about superposition. And so I just bring this up here to remind you what that was all about. And of course, we have to stay within that linear elastic range, but we're able to add the stress conditions from different loading mechanisms uh, to each other. So what are the loading mechanisms that we have just as a summary? So if we look at normal stresses, of course, we have axially or normal stresses due to axial load, and that's represented by this formula, sigma equals P over A. And so that will give us a normal stress uh, perpendicular to the cross-section uh, at the point that we're considering. And we also have normal stresses resulting from bending, and so we use the flexure formula, negative MY over I, uh, to figure out what the normal stresses are, again, perpendicular to the cross-section, resulting from bending. Now, we have a couple shear stress a loading condition we had direct shear which i haven't put on the slide but that's obviously a, an option uh, but we have the shear stress due to torsion represented by you know tr t rho tc over j we've used a number of different uh, variables to represent the distance from the center of our shaft uh, and then we have tau is equal to vq over it which of course is the transverse shear stress resulting from bending and so these are going to cause shear stresses parallel to the face, uh, and we need to be able to calculate all these and bring them together. So let's look at combination of normal stresses. And so to look at combination of normal stresses, what I want to do is I want to look at a situation, perhaps in a beam, where we have bending, but we also have an axial load applied. And that's easy to consider uh, cases where that might be the case. And so if we look at each one individually and we drew its stress uh, distribution, they would look something like this. And so we see in the case of the axial stresses, we have uniform axial stresses. This is shown in tension uh, across the entire cross section. And then if this beam was in bending, we would have the stress distribution shown there where we have zero at the neutral axis extending out to maximum at the most extreme fibers. In this case, it's a positive moment. So compression at the top, uh, tension at the bottom and um, varying linearly between them. So if in our case, this was the uh, a structure was being loaded with both axial stresses and uh, bending, then what we would expect is that our stress distribution would be the sum of the component parts. Because these stresses are on the same face, going in the same direction, positive or negative, they are additive and they would add to each other. And so we would change our stress distribution to look at as the sum of the two of them. And we see what that would look like here. And so the tensile axial stress has taken away from the compressive 
uh, uh, normal stresses due to bending, and they've added and made worse, if you will, uh, the tensile stresses due to bending. Now, as we were talking about, we also, when we talk about combined stresses, we have to start talking about normal stresses and shear stresses coexisting at the same time. And for that to work, this is where we really need to ha start to apply our appreciation and understanding for what face in what direction and of what sense the various stresses are occurring as a result of the various basic loading patterns. So this is where, you know, following a little prescription doesn't really work very well for us. If we can visualize where the stresses are occurring and what direction they're occurring on and what face they're occurring on, we're going to have a, a much greater chance of being able to combine these all together in an appropriate way. So again, we have a, a beam and bending and we know that that beam and bending has both normal stresses uh, resulting from it, and we see the normal stress distribution shown out there, but it's also going to have shear stresses resulting from uh, the shear force, and we see V there. So what we want to do is to be able to look at a point which will vary over the height, because our shear stresses we know are going to vary over the height, as are our, our normal stresses varying over the height, and combine them at a point to show the uh, totality of the normal and shear stresses occurring. So if we look at a point here just below the neutral axis, some distance below the neutral axis, and we take that sort of strip of material, and this is, uh, so if we look at the dark blue element at the side, that's our differential element, if you will, represented there with a little bit more size to it, but consider it a, the element at a point and what it would look like if it was extended across the beam. And, and so here is that piece in isolation, and we're going to have both shear stresses on it and so we see those on the three-dimensional strip but then also re represented as we do in our on our differential element with our shear stresses remember because of equilibrium they are occurring sort of squeezing to opposite corners uh, so if it's down on the x positive face it's going to be up on the x negative face and uh, to the left on the a positive Y face and to the right on the negative Y face. And to this we can add our normal stresses. So we see our normal stresses, uh, sigma at X, uh, across our three-dimensional element and also represented on our plane stress element uh, shown here. And so in this case it's in tension because of where we drew this. Uh, it's in tension uh, and so shown positive uh, or to the right on the positive x face and to the left on the negative x face. And so this would show the combination of both normal and shear stresses that occur at that point. And so we have our first example where we basically look at our T-beam, the example that we've used previously. Uh, we already know its uh, uh, stress distribution as a result of bending. And what we're going to do is to, in this example, and the link to the YouTube is there, where we're going to combine the axial stresses and the bending or the normal stresses due to bending uh, in that example. So I'm just quickly bring up what it's ultimately going to look like, but I'll leave you to follow that link uh, to go through the example to see the explanation of that. So as we start to combine stresses, the, the procedure for doing this, if you're looking for a path, it is fairly straightforward. So we're going to look at all of our internal loading. So we have, as we summarized earlier, a, a number of internal loading or simple loading mechanisms, and we have to look at each one that applies in whatever case we're looking at and figure out what stresses it's going to cause, paying particular attention to what face uh, those stresses are occurring on and in what direction and the nature of them. Are they shear stresses? Are they uh, normal stresses? Uh, and, and so with all those stress components determined, now we can use superposition to superimpose them. So we can analyze the bits using our simple loading mechanisms, but bring the stresses together using superposition. And to make that work, we have to pay particularly close attention to like stresses on like faces. So normal stresses on the same face in the same 
so the face of course is going to be either x y or z direction um, and so you know they're going to be in tension or compression so they're either going to add or subtract from each other and shear stresses are the same thing but they have to be going in this on the same face in the same direction so if they're on the positive x uh, direction or the positive x face they'll either be going in the plus y or plus uh, or negative y di direction and so they'll either add or subtract from them when we go on later on in subsequent courses and we start looking at it in three dimensions we'll add the z direction in there as well so just remember like stresses on the like face uh, in the same direction and then we can add and subtract them using superposition so to sync this home, we've got an example worked up and I provide the, the link here so uh, where you can follow through the, the solution in slow time. Uh, so this is basically a beam, but it's got a bend in it, which adds some interesting complexity to it. But it means that at the point of interest, at point C, it's going to be both in flexure as well as uh, in, under an axial load. And, and so we go through that solution and we see how we can use our simple loading mechanisms to analyze the individual stress components resulting from them but then because we understand what face they're on and what direction they are and the nature of them we can combine like stresses uh, on our 2d element and figure out what the stress condition is at that point so so when you finish that example of course what we're going to have now is the ability to come up with the totality of the stress condition at any point from any of our loading mechanisms. And so then what we need to do is look and say, okay, what, how do these stresses interact uh, amongst themselves? And so that'll be the next lecture coming up where we'll start talking about rotation of stresses and principal stresses. So hopefully you'll join us there.